building building it back. Um, we were uh, beginning to seek him more diligently, looking for what he was going to do, and and he um, what's the best word to use here? He brought us he brought us down to the basics, and we're starting to rebuild it. We we ended up going through a, a course that a friend sent. This was in 2000, called uh, the testing of your faith. And I've come to now understand that this is not something unusual. But this is how God works. You see, his goal for Romans 829 is that I become like Christ. I'm not like Christ. So that means I've got to change. So he uses things like shutting your company down as a tool to mold us and shape us in the image of Christ. You see, we think that building the business is the goal. And that's not the goal. His goal is building us. And he's using the business as a tool. And oh, by the way, he can use that to impact others too. See, the process is more important than the end goal. We, especially us guys, are all goal oriented. That's a deal. Just give me the plan and we'll do it. God's plan is no, you're the subject of this. And, and from my studies of, uh, of heaven, it's a uh, eternal process. It takes, it takes eternity to get to know an infinite God. And so the process we're in now doesn't stop. Yeah, it never stops. This constant process of molding and shaping us to be more and more and more of the sun. And it's the small business is the best tool I know for doing that next to Mary. <laughs> we, we have a lot of experience in that. We celebrate 50 years this year. If you ever want an example of God's absolute miraculous crossing of the Red Sea, just consider that you put up with me for 50 years. <laughs> so this testing issue was a big deal. Uh, by the time my friend Larry Albertson sent us those tapes, we were angry with God and angry with each other. And um, we said, okay, we'll watch one of the sessions that's in the back. We watched that first session. It's got it's 12 sessions long, and uh, looked at each other and said, we are failing this text. We are absolutely failing this text. And we watched watch the second session. We watched two per week and that's not all we could digest. Uh, I, I think it's the best course Bruce Wilkinson ever did. If you ever get a chance, please go to here. You can get it from the Bible. Uh, or join my classroom and see it. It's, uh, it's amazing to me how, how intentional God is about moving us from who we are into who he sees us to be. That's a, it's, a, it's a painful and extensive process. And he uses these tests of faith as very important tools. So he had us right in the middle of that. It was an amazing time. We went through that course, and shortly thereafter, the trial was over. I still have the church bulletin from that Christmas service when I wrote in the margin, the trial was over. God had spoken to me. He said, we got a contract with a major Canadian mining company a couple months later, and uh, a friend called someone who's been following our work earlier work in the 80s called me up and said it's uh, it's time to develop the drill. And he started funding our work in 02 and that process has continued since then. Uh, we are, are uh, deeply involved in uh, doing things that we don't have any idea about. <laughs> a friend of mine gave me my son-in-law who is a friend of mine gave me quote by Albert Einstein saying if we knew what we were doing it wouldn't be called research. <laughs> and that, that really does fit who we are at Touch Corporation. Um, 
the, the theme verse for our company is, if any lack of wisdom, just to ask and be given it up reproach. Told one of our people, we need to put a sign across the laboratory door saying, we the company pray each day for that wisdom and profound need. Because we are doing things now that uh, are pushing the frontiers of technology. We're doing things that have been done. It is uh, exciting, but kind of like that roller coaster. It drops pretty steep sometimes. So, what's the issue? So, what do we learn from all this? God, God is intentional. <laughs> God is intentional about this process. So it, it's very, in, in hindsight, it's so clear to me that he was absolutely intentional about shutting Tetra down. That he basically had to start over. That, that he got my attention and he, he uh, got my commitment to him, then the first thing he had to do was rebuild it. Sometimes you can fix an old car, and sometimes you just shoot it. <laughs> Go get something else. Well, this was a shooting process. <laughs> Shut it down. And then rebuilt it. And rebuilt it the way he wanted it. So the issue was transformation. And, and I would suggest to you that's always the issue. You have come here tonight and tomorrow to, to hear some really good speakers, a tremendous fan of Jeffries. Uh, we've come to hear some really good people. But you don't want to go from here having heard some really good people. That's not the goal. The goal is for you to leave this conference a different person than you came because of the transforming work of the Holy Spirit. That's, that's the whole idea. That's the whole idea. What, what is this about? Becoming like Christ. That's what it's why does he call us to work on the marketplace? First off, to change us, close to the image of Christ. Then, second off, to use us, to reach through us in the lives of others. And to help them in their transformation. You see, eternal life starts at the moment of salvation. And continues forever. And he's determined to change us to Christ. Not just a casual thing with Really determined. And, and he's willing to put us through some really hard times to do that. He's absolutely willing to do that. So he's got the right to. Because the cross, we were bought with a price, a really expensive price. He's got the right to put us through whatever he chooses to accomplish his goals in us. So transformation is the goal. I've become convinced that there are only two things that matter in the Christian life. That's to trust God and obey God. That sums up everything that matters. That when we come to trust Christ for our salvation, it starts the process. And the process then continues forever. But it's two parts to it. It's to trust Him and obey Him. And he's determined to do what he will. And in, in our case, Riley shared all the pain with him. In our case, he chose to close the company down to teach us that we could trust him. And then closed, chose to close down all income for a year to show us that we needed to obey. We needed both sides of this. He's got the right to do that. So we, we spend a lot of time as a company in prayer. Uh, our business is Paul's Power. And, uh, that's why I put the lightning bolt up. We, we move electricity around uh, other folks use, use water. Room. And a uh, great fan of lightning. Uh, in the lab now. <laughs> we are uh, continually going before him, seeking the wisdom. We are so far beyond our natural abilities in our company that uh, we have to be constantly seeking for the solutions. It is an incredible journey. 
we have a major contract with two major companies. We didn't do any more. God got that. <coughs> it's an amazing journey. You, you hit your wagon to his horse. And, uh, there's no lack of power, but you need to hang on. We'll go places that you never thought. The key thing that I have learned in this, in addition to trusting and obeying, Keep part of the bank that we have to release control of everything for God to fully use us. I tell my students the point where life really begins is at the point of surrender. Because at that point, God can do anything He chooses to do. There's no limits. Up until that point, we always squabble with it whatever he wants to do. We always think we've got a better idea. We always want to do it our way. Real life begins at that point of surrender. It is a difficult place to get to. And often, people will bring you through a car crash in Cancun or a collapse of the company to bring you to that point. The, Bruce says it well, Bruce Wilkinson. He says, the change is agony. Change is when going through the process of getting to that point where you're willing to release control is amazing. And once you're on the other side, you never want to go back. That's tough to get to. So I would summarize our our journey with those three things: trust, obey, and surrender. Trust and obey, but there's no other way. 